Hey, it's John at Tinderbox Arts. So this is my Triumph Bonneville. It's a 2010 model, one of the uh, first modern classics. It's EFI, electronic fuel injection. And you'll notice that there's something missing, which is the battery from this box right here. Now I've made some previous videos about batteries and battery charging and uh, some electrical things that we all need to understand when we're working on these bikes. And those may be helpful as a review, but the reason I'm, I'm making this video today is to talk about a very specific problem. So a certain number of Triumph models, definitely including this one, um, in a certain time period, had programming in the computer, the engine computer, which looks at the battery voltage, and if it's below a certain amount, it will not allow the bike to start. What do I mean by that? Well, it's a low enough voltage where even though the fuel pump may be powering up and even though the starter might be capable of starting the bike, the computer will not allow it to happen. All right, right here is where you'd be sitting on the bike. This empty space is where the battery goes and behind the battery is the engine computer. Now it was programmed from the factory with a certain threshold of voltage to allow a start or no start. And along the way, Triumph did realize there was an issue, and you can go to the dealership and have them update uh, the programming on this computer so that it lowers the threshold a little bit. So you can get away with a little bit lower voltage. What that voltage is, however, is not particularly clear. Now, how do you know if you have this problem? Well, it can be a little frustrating sometimes to know, but um, typically what happens is you'll turn the key on to the start position, you'll hear the fuel pump power up, and that's an important point. There's enough voltage you'll know um, so that you'll hear that fuel pump power up. And you'll go to start the bike and you'll just get a clicking noise. Well, that clicking noise is this starter relay right here. Uh, it might be called a starter solenoid either way, but it's a electro electrical device which is supposed to get that starter itself moving. Well, it'll just click on you. And you may think to yourself, well, okay, maybe I have a problem with the starter. Maybe you might blame the battery. Um, you might blame the wiring and you'll start looking for problems. Well, it may be, now you could have problems, but it may be that just the computer itself is sensing that the voltage is too low and will not allow um, the starter to, to, to engage. Now, when I say the ECU prevents the bike from starting, um, here's a wiring diagram. Yours may look a little different if you have a different bike, but just to give you a, a kind of a brief overview here of how this could happen, how the ECU could prevent it from starting. The starter relay that we were talking about is right here. That's connected um, with a ground, okay, that makes its way back to the ECU. All right. And there's some other wires here this red and white wire, if we follow that over, we get to the headlight cutout relay, all right? That relay is supposed to, I think that's where that ground is too, that relay is supposed to turn the headlight off momentarily while you start the bike so you're not running both, you know, the headlight and the starter motor at the same time, which would be a big load. When we say the ECU can prevent it, that's really how it is. That headlight cutout relay and the starter relay are working together normally. And if the ECU says no ground, it's not going to work. So to actually diagnose the problem, you know, you have to get a meter out and you have to look at the voltage of the battery. Um, and, you know, you will have to do standard troubleshooting because it is possible that you have a problem with the relay or you have a problem with the starter or the wiring or the battery just really is low. But it could also be that the battery is just marginal and it might, if the computer allowed it, actually start the bike. But because the computer doesn't allow it, because it's below that threshold, it's not going to happen. In this situation, by the way, you can um, push start the bike. In other words, the fuel pump is powered up, so you are getting fuel um, to the throttle bodies. And you can get a good running start, put it in first gear, uh, pull the clutch in, and you know, while you're moving down the road there, five to 10 miles an hour in that range, if somebody's pushing you or you're going downhill, you can let that clutch out and it'll roar to life. Okay, so why do I have my own battery out here? Well, um, recently I had several, actually two times in a row, uh, instances of this very problem that we're talking about. Uh, I went to start the bike, 
it had even been on a tender for a little while and um, it, the bike just would not start. I, I, I hear the fuel pump going, I hear the starter relay click, and that's as far as I get. So after the second time, I got annoyed enough where I took the seat off and, and the panels off here, started poking around with the meter, and discovered what the problem was. I really couldn't find anything wrong with the starter. All the connections look good. The battery, okay, did at least have a surface charge, which we'll talk about in a second here. In other words, the voltage looked okay. Now, in a previous video I did, uh, I discussed how to test a battery in the field using the bike itself as a load, and with a meter you can see what's going on. So I did some of that, and I found out that basically this battery um, initially appeared to have a charge of, say, you know, mid-12s, 12.5, 12.3, something in that range, which is not super high, but it's okay, and it should start the bike. Uh, but as soon as I turned the light on and, and the switch, you know, to start, and the light comes on is what I'm trying to say, um, the voltage would drop, you know, pretty quickly. In fact, it went below 12. And that's when I knew I had a problem. So I tried charging this several times and uh, you know, I'm just getting erratic readings from this battery. And the second time I tried to charge it, um, it was getting really hot, like oh, you know, overheated really. So I knew the battery had some issues. And this battery is six years old, um, which is not a bad run for a battery on a motorcycle, honestly. I probably would have gotten another year or two out of it However, I did have some issues with the charging system, which I also made a video about. Um, and, you know, so I fixed those issues with the charging system, but for some period of time, the battery was not getting enough charge. So all this combines to the idea that it was time to get a new battery. Anyway, while I'm waiting for the new battery to come in, I thought to myself, well, you know, I really wish I knew what the voltage threshold was in this computer um, that would allow a start or no start. Uh, because if I had that knowledge, I could at least, you know, predict when it's going to be a problem. Um, and, you know, I have this battery here that's basically trashed. I'm going to replace it. So I thought, you know what? Why don't I put this back into the bike and I'm going to take some voltage readings and we'll try to see if we can find out where that threshold is where the computer will not allow it to start anymore. All right, so I set up a little test here. Uh, I have the computer kind of out of the way here. This is not the way the battery normally goes. Uh, I just want to try to get the meter and the battery all in one shot here. So I hooked up some alligator clips to the battery directly. I have a voltage reading. It's This is excellent. This is what you would want to see um, in a fully charged battery. So I have 12.74 volts. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the key to the on position. We'll see if the surface charge goes away or drops down dramatically. And then I'm just going to leave the light on and let it run down the battery. At some point when I get near 12.43 in that range, I'll try starting the bike, see if it still starts, and we'll continue that until we find out that it won't start. So at 12.74, let me just turn the key to the on position. Let's see what happens. All right, it drops down quite a bit. 12, wow. So 12.06. So that's just with a light. So this battery has seen better days. All right, so we're at 12.08. I mean, I gotta move the bike here a little bit to start it. And let's just see what happens. All right, so at 12.08, it did start. And that's actually a little bit surprising to me. I thought it was gonna be maybe closer to 12.2 or something where the threshold is. All right, if you look here, I've got two meters going now. One says 12.15, one says 11.92. So <laughs> I'm not sure, honestly, which one is most accurate, but we're gonna give it a try now. And uh, let's just see if we do have any thing left to start. Fire in a hole. Ah, there it is. So now I have the bike back off. I've switched meters again. I'm at 12.3 volts. Um, and clearly in that last test, this meter got below 12 and all I got was that click. Um, so I'm going to try this again. I'm going to turn the bike on. Right now the bike's off. I'll turn the bike on. Let's watch the meter. And it jumps down below 12, 11.85. This is going to click. Here we go. 
and all I get is that is that relay click. So what have I proven here? Anything, you know, <laughs> with having different meters here and different readings, it does illustrate how cautious you have to be about, you know, making assumptions about a meter. So I think what we've determined here is, is that somewhere around 12.2 volts, maybe 12.1 in that range, I think is when you're going to start seeing trouble. Whether it'll start a little bit below that, maybe it will, maybe it won't, but definitely below 12, you're done. It's just going to get that click. Now, if the computer weren't making this control, it's possible, possible, that the starter would attempt to start the bike and it might work. So if this bike were already warmed up, for example, I just turned it off for a few seconds and I was at 11 point, you know, nine volts and I went to start it again without a computer controlling it, there's a pretty good chance the starter would turn over fine because the engine would be hot and it would start. All right, so I have a new battery on the way. Um, just so you know, it, to get this old battery out, this is not what you would normally be looking at. Uh, normally, you'd have the computer right here behind the battery. Then you have this plastic spacer, which goes between the computer and the battery. And then, of course, you have the terminals themselves. This little rubber strap just goes over the battery ties in here and on the other side so that it holds the battery in place. To get this out, all you got to do is unscrew the terminals and, and pull the thing out. 